In this video, I want to draw this beautiful Zurich church and surrounding streets freehand in ink. But in drawing this, I want to highlight the marks I make, the way I use my pen to maximize, if you like, the accuracy of my drawing when nothing can be erased. So let's start. The first thing to maximize success is just to have a little planning as to where we're going to go. And I'm going to start with this building here because that will give me this and this. And from this, I can start to align this central part of my drawing. If I start with this and I get this too large, then this could end up larger again than I want it to be. So by drawing this first, hopefully I can control the scale of the overall drawing better. I'm going to be trying to draw it actual size. I'll be highlighting the various marks I use and other devices to try and be as accurate as possible. Okay, so this marks the side of where I want to end. So this marks that. I've just put another mark on the paper. So that'll just help me estimate this distance. So I'm just putting the dot and then, so a dot where I'll, if I'm happy where the dot is, I'll run the line through it and the dot will be less obvious. Okay, so now in doing this next section, I'm going to put a mark to indicate this distance from here to here. I don't want to draw these lines first these diagonals, because I know from experience, it's easy to make them too long. It's much more accurate to look from here to here, from here to here, say. And now, see me correct that line? And now I can complete this line. Now, there's a corner in the bridge here. Now, for these windows, I'm going to do some guidelines, fairly direct lines, for the perspective. These shouldn't be very obvious. I'm going to put the downpipe in first. So I've just tried to capture the effect of that, not any exactness. But now I can measure off where this is. So now we have this light. The actual light itself lines up with about here, and that's going to be a bit too far across. Oh no, look, hang on. There is actually another line there. So this comes across and that, yep. I always prefer just to leave a wrong line, put the correct line in so that I position my shapes properly. So this sits there. I want to put this figure in and get this little bit of roadway defined. And just notice here that this isn't straight because the ground level isn't quite straight. So now this figure is going to go from just about there and their head's going to line up with about there. And now I have to visualize our gentleman there and think, is this look about right? Because I'll be aligning the cathedral partly with him. I think his head's just a little bit too close. So, okay, so now I just put his head in. Always do the head smaller than you think. And just make his legs a little bit longer than the marks I'd left for them. And now we can see that the bridge will end just a bit past that. And now I have a little crowd scene already on our bridge. So I'll just finish these dormer windows just so we're done. I'll actually start with the center one, 
because that max, and then I can move down and up, which in my mind will maximize my chance of accuracy. And I just realized that I have been actually drawing with a 0 0.3 millimeter pen. So that explains why I was getting a heavier effect overall than I was expecting. I'll use a 0 0.2 for the rest of the drawing. The first thing I'll do is just to establish this ground level here, which is going to come in about here, I think. Sort of a few more tentative marks there because I don't want to draw a solid line just in case it's not quite where I want it. And I need also to establish this line here because this is going to be the baseline for the cathedral. And that should line up with the top of this. So just a mark to see, is this the sort of distance I expect? There's kind of like a halfway point in the center of that person there, that gentleman, I think it is there. And I think that's going to look okay. Because I've got these lampposts coming in front, I'm just going to do a few, a few dots at this point. And I think what I'm going to do now is establish this, the base of this tower now. And so this downpipe is the corner of the tower. Now it goes through that guy's head, but it's more important that I get this proportion correct than worry about whether, because he's probably a bit far out into the street. What I might actually do is put this line and I'm wanting to create this shape. And so now there's also a line here. And now there's a line here. And again, I'm looking at this distance here. I'm not going along the diagonal and it's less than this one. So I want it to be less than that. Okay, and if I'd paid more attention, I would have seen that we don't actually have a line there. The line angles up above. A fairly light line still that I can correct if they're too much of a mess. And now we have a line that's going to be sort of coming about, about halfway between here and here. So we want to position it nicely. And now... This line is going to be pretty much, uh, it's a bit less than that actually. And it angles down to here. But again, I'm just, I'm more concerned about getting a line that where the angle looks correct than exactly where it lines up. So now I think that's, that's looking a reasonable proportion. And we go slower on this tower because we'll be reading the next tower off it and the, and the bit in between as well. Now, I also wanted to leave to put some marks to indicate where this tree is going to go. That's reserved that. So I think this tree actually can go a bit higher. Now, this distance here is a bit more than that distance, I think. But the other thing is we want this tower to be pretty much touching this one. Now from here to here does look like it's the same, maybe slightly less than from there to there. No, see, I didn't get that right. There's less of this roof showing than I thought. And that changes where this line angles from. And of course, this needs to align here with this. And again, I've got to be tempted not to come down from there, but actually to look at, you know, from here to here. I can push that slightly because there is actually some decorative architecture there. I'm lost because this goes down there. So this angle here had to be much steeper than I was allowing for it. And that explains why it hasn't quite worked there. So this now is looking better. If it's not right, don't push on. It's not going to look more right if you make the mistakes more heavily. And let's just again see how obvious that looks at the end. I keep telling you that mistakes don't matter as much at the end. And then I come up again.
and we might as well position this because we have everything we need to position it. Um, so I'll do the base first, which lines up pretty much with this corner. The important thing is we center it. And so this spot here is going to be level with about there is what I'm looking at. So level with about there. And I need something that's directly centered on the base. So this is where now the important thing is that this spire will look straight. Let's hope I don't mess it up, making it a bit heavier later. So I think we're going to put some of this detail on now. Always place the head first where we want it and then make the rest of the body fit. So we might uh, just position this section, the details here, before we go up and do those uh, two spires that, that sit on top, shall we? So again, I need a few, a few um, marks to just help me position things. Now, the important thing is that the proportions end up well against the tower, not necessarily that they end up accurately against the house. So I'm going to put these lines down where I think... So I'm kind of just checking where I want the outsides of the window to be. I want that line to come down there. The buttress comes out from there and then it's to there. And then there's another one here. And then, yeah, it's, it's not too far off. So we're staying pretty gestural with that and we don't want to connect it too closely with the house or it will actually become quite um, just a bit congested with ink. So there's the roof and this, this buttress sits back a little bit of the roof. Now these sit in the middle so I'm going to position them, the, the gap between them. So I'm really going by negative space at this point. And there we go with those. And I have these little, I hate doing these things. Um, they're just really hard to get the angle right on the roof. Yep, see, look, shockers. Maybe one day I'll just start to leave them out. But I don't like to leave things out. We never learn. Now I'm looking at this and Again, I've got to understand what I'm drawing. It's actually a hexagonal shape. So the corners, so this face is parallel, this face is parallel, and here's the corner. So I'm going to kind of look at this proportion. I'm going to draw this one so it feels right, looks right, and then I'll work this one off this one. So I'm looking at sort of from here to here is about the same maybe as from there to uh, probably a bit more than from there to there, there to there. That looks about right. Now is this going to be, I don't know that it's quite, I think it's looking a bit small, having been worried that it was too big. So I'm just going to push it out slightly here. Sometimes it's good to know when just to leave alone then that that's probably as good as it's going to get. So now I want to balance that on the other side. See, I'm looking at this thinking, yeah, this is this goes too high. Maybe if I just bring the decoration down slightly, that will help. 
Same thing though, let's establish the, the width. Hmm. I hope it doesn't end up being a fatter tower because it's meant to be slightly thinner. That's better. Sometimes to add the extra line, even if it creates a little extra line, the silhouette is more important than any one line. And I think for that, for that top right tower, that's the case. Yep, so that tower is a little bit too high. I can perhaps minimize the effect of that by just increasing this railing a little bit. That probably works slightly. The next thing I want to do is establish the foreground. I might get this, this road in. This is sort of where I want it to finish here. Now I'm going to position these lamps next at least the tops of them now this one is sort of level with here now this one is level with here that's too high and then we have one here which is kind of like going to be in a straight line that now I'm, I'm not going to draw this one in yet because it's the closest one and we see where it sits so we want to position that one more exactly now he's pretty much on the corner. I'll just move him slightly off center. Put the man on the wrong side of the lamp. I actually think I'm going to obliterate the man because he was too high. And now we get to actually place the, the bridge here. Now, we have this guy on a bike. We really just want to be suggesting the bike. So now I've got this, this guy over here. And now we can put the roadway in. This line actually comes across. And isn't it good that we move this gentleman who was up here somewhere? We don't notice that he was in the wrong place at all anymore, do we? Might do the cross hatching of the tree. I'm gonna make this nice and dark. Try and make these a couple of lampposts stand out. I'm just going to do this, this house here. And now I'm going to use a finer pen, a 0.1 millimeter pen for this building that's in the back, furthest background, just to make sure it sits nice and far back. And we want this to be a bit of a kind of blur of lines, but still with enough clarity that we get a sense, oh, there's a, there's a rush of people here on the bridge without having to see the exactness. Again, we're drawing the effect of what's there. The most important thing is to try and help their heads and feet be relatively in the right place to each other. And now I just want to get this curve in. So work out the point where it's going to come to, which is going to be about level with here. So 
So just a little sense of um, texture here in the foreground, just to add a little bit of interest. That creates a little bit of visual separation between this and this and this. I think we apply it to this building in the background as well. And again, that creates a little bit of separation between here and here. This is how I do a freehand drawing. It probably took me just over an hour. This, this line is angled too much. It doesn't fit in between the angle of these two. I think it's angled either the same or slightly more than this angle. So I just need to... I just need to flatten it slightly. See why it's always good to correct your mistakes and why it's always good just to have a little look over. And this one now is too high. And that works better. And I missed out this. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I, I hope there was enough information here to make it interesting and worthwhile for you. How, as I draw freehand, I'm positioning things and trying to get a sense of where should things go. Why don't you have a go drawing this yourself freehand? Perhaps you could navigate through the drawing the same way I did and see how you find that kind of strategy of starting, progressing and giving little indications before you actually commit in terms of finding your own drawing style for this church in Zurich. And of course, you'll find this photo on my channel community page. So why not give it a go? But hey, whatever you're drawing, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.